Brothers and sisters in Islam, we all seek happiness in life. As a matter of fact, Muslims and non-Muslims alike all strive to achieve this goal, to have a blissful life free of worry, anguish, and distress. However, people differ in their definitions with regards to what is happiness. Some consider having wealth to be the source of happiness. Others consider having a lofty social status to be happiness. While yet others see fame to be the source of uh, happiness. And yet there are some people who consider merely fulfilling their desires the source of happiness. And despite the fact that many people fulfill happiness as per their definition, yet lead a distressed, depressed life. But why? Since the definition you set forth to be for happiness was fulfilled, why do we see many people always grieved, always saddened, always depressed well because their definitions revolve around the glitter of this life and its pleasures and is devoid of any element or aspect of faith Allah Azza wa Jal has no share in their lives and if they do they have a very, very narrow margin in their life for Allah Azza wa Jal. You see the one whose main objective and highest priorities in life revolve around life, its pleasures, its possessions will never achieve real happiness and bliss. Rather, will, he will obtain the exact opposite of that. See, Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed and said in the Quran that whoever has his main concern to be other than Allah, he has decided to lead a miserable life and a depressed one. Allah says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَا he who turns away from my remembrance will indeed have a miserable life. Ibn Kathir commenting on this verse said, such people will never feel tranquility. Their hearts will never find comfort and nothing, nothing can soothe it. Rather, they will lead a life that is full of sadness, anguish, worry, distress, depression. Why? As a result of their turning away from Allah. As a result of their disobedience to Allah. And their hearts, he goes on to say, and their hearts will always be confused, uncertain, will face problems finding its way to guidance, will have difficulty maintaining themselves upon the right path, and will always be having gloomy lives and depressed ones. Depression 
is the term of the era we live in, is the leading disease from which, according to 2017 statistics, 350 million people globally suffer from it. And the numbers are increasing. And it is the leading cause behind suicide and addiction to drugs and alcohol. What leads to depression? What leads to one having a distressed, depressed, gloomy life? Well, number one is what Allah mentioned in the verse, turning away from Allah, turning away from the commandments of Allah, transgressing the boundaries set by Allah Azza wa Jal. Number two, attaching your heart to other than Allah. See, when one's heart is attached to something other than Allah Azza wa Jal, it prevents him from attaching his life, his heart to Allah Azza wa Jal, and therefore Allah forsakes him. And whoever is forsook by Allah Azza wa Jal will certainly lead a depressed life. Lack of trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, which is translated to fear of the future, fear of the unknown. If we put our trust in Allah, if we rely on Allah, this will never happen. But the majority of us don't really have that real trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. And therefore, they're, they're always thinking, oh, this might happen and that might happen. My future with this, I lose my job. My... Leave it to Allah. You have a creator. Leave it to him. Everything is in his hands. And everything is predestined. Everything was recorded before our creation. So leave it to Him. Sinning. Sinning is the major key you hand over to shaitan to control your life. And one of the main tasks shaitan has is to sadden us. To put that element of depression in our hearts and make us for, for, uh, give up hope in Allah's assistance, forgiveness, and mercy. If we take care of these things, brothers and sisters, our lives will change. Our feelings will change. Our souls will change. And most certainly, our behavior with Allah will change. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala al-nabiy al-mustafa. ثم أما بعد الله عز وجل diagnosed the problem diagnosed the disease, the disease told us the problem told us the reasons but he always سبحانه وتعالى is merciful so he gave us the cure the way out of this and before I go on to enumerate different means of relieving oneself from depression, I must say that there are cases where medicine and medical assistance is to be sought and adhered to in addition to the spiritual assistance. But my focus 
is on the Islamic aspect of treatment. See, going about treating depression or facing and countering depression was stated by Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran. Allah says, "Ma farratna fil kitab min shay." We didn't leave anything out from this book. Everything is mentioned. The solution for everything for those who have hearts, who read the Quran with their hearts, not with their eyes. Allah Azza wa Jal says, and listen attentively. Man amila salihan min dakarin aw unta wa huwa mu'min. Whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, while a believer, then we will certainly cause him to have a good life. A good life meaning life free of anguish free of depression, free of worries. And there are, there are two types of deeds a believer can perform. Physical deeds and deeds of the heart. The first set is going to be pertaining to the physical type of deeds, righteous deeds a believer can perform, which will relieve him from worries, anguish, and depression. Number one, dua, supplicating Allah Azza wa Jal. Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, and this is reported by Imam al-Hakim and classified as authentic by al-Albani, said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to them, should I not tell you of something when a man suffers distress or anguish, can do, and he will be relieved? The dua of the noon, Yunus alayhi salatu was salam, when he was swallowed by the whale. La ilaha illa anta subhanak, inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Meaning by the virtue of saying this and supplicating whatever you want after that, that will be answered and your heart will be relieved from anguish and depression. Number two, dhikr, mentioning Allah, remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. Asma bint Umais radiallahu anha, narrated as reported by Abu Dawood and classified as authentic by Al-Albani. May Allah have mercy on them all. Said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her or taught her rather than told her, taught her few words. He said, if you say them while you are distressed or depressed, you will be relieved. He said, say, Allah, Allah Rabbi, la ushriku, la ushriku bihi shay'a. Again, Allah, Allah Rabbi, la ushriku bihi shay'a. And there are many narrations which stated different types of dhikr that relieve one from depression and anguish. But due to the nature of a khutbah, I can't list them all. Number three, salah, prayer. Hudayfa radiallahu anhu narrated and this is reported by Abu Dawood, classified as Hassan by Al-Albani, said 
that whenever the Prophet ﷺ was grieved, he would hasten to pray. He would rush and pray. When you stand before Allah Azza wa Jal, your heart is attached. Your mind is free of everything, or at least it's supposed to be. But focusing on this act of worship, you're addressing the one in whose hands is the control of everything. So anything that depresses you or worries you will be taken care of when you address it. Number four, uttering salah on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a lot. In the narration, it's a long narration by Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu anhu and reported by Ahmad in his Musnad, classified as sound by Al-Albani, Hassan. He was asking the Prophet sallallahu how much of his supplication should be just uttering salah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Until at the end of the narration, he, Ubay that is, said to Muhammad in sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then I will make all my supplication just simply saying salah upon you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon hearing that, said to him, then Allah will relieve you from all things that depress you and will forgive your sins. Number five in this category, physical deeds, is asking Allah's forgiveness, uttering istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Imam Ahmad reported in his Musnad, and it is classified as authentic, by Ahmad Shakir rahmatullahi alayhi or rather Hassan by Ahmad Shakir rahmatullahi alayhi that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever frequently asks forgiveness from Allah azza wa jal will obtain three prizes from Allah azza wa jal number one ja'ala allahu lahu مِنْ كُلِّ ضِيقٍ مَخْرَجَةٍ مَنْ دَوَى مَا عَلَى الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ ضِيقٍ مَخْرَجَةٍ Allah Azza wa Jal will make a way out from him from every hardship he faces. وَمِنْ كُلِّ هَمٍ فَرَجَةٍ And that will relieve him from all types of anguish and depression. وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And will provide from him from means which he never expected. These were some physical deeds one can do in order to relieve himself from depression and anguish. But there are matters that are pertaining to the heart. Matters that are pertaining to the heart or deeds that are performed by the heart which relieve a person's depression and anguish and anxiety. Number one, putting your trust in Allah. Relying on Allah. Allah Azza wa says, وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever puts his trust Whoever relies upon Allah, then Allah is sufficient. It's sufficient for everything. Whoever puts his trust in Allah, is sufficed. Number two, another deed performed by the heart is contentment at the times of calamities and affliction. Anas radiallahu anhu narrated, and this is reported by Imam Ahmad, classified as sound by Al-Albani, 
that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah idha ahabba qawman ibtalahum When Allah loves a people, He will test them, He will afflict them. فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى Whoever is content, whoever is pleased with what he is going through, will get the pleasure. That pleasure is either the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, or as some of the scholars said, Allah Azza wa Jal will make his heart pleased by relieving it from any type of worry or depression. The list goes on. But the point of the matter is to put these matters into practice and not simply, not simply enumerate them for the sake of listing deeds to be done. We need to act upon the advice or advises of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the instructions of Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to attach our hearts to Him and to make our feet firm on His path and to relieve us all and our loved ones from any anxiety, worries or depression. Allahumma Ameen. Allahumma Aghfir Lana Dunubana Wa Israfana Fi Amrina وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات